Hi there. Welcome to Jetstream Safety Video. My name is Gary Tooth and we are going to be taking a look at the Jetstream 4200 X-Series bump you see here. Your unit may be slightly older than this since we've been building pumps and accessories for over 40 years. Throughout this presentation, we will be looking at the 4200 series, but we will also have pictures of older units so you can match the components to the ones that you may have at your facility. A couple of quick caveats before we get started. First of all, this is not intended to be a pump and operations video. We have one available through your local FS Solution Center. Second of all, this should never take the place of qualified training before someone is qualified to water blast. This is simply an overview of the safety systems that Jetstream has in its units and its accessories. This is the latest version of Jetstream's weatherproof control box. All of the gauges you need are built in and are electronically operated. You may have an older version of the weatherproof control box or on the original units, the gauges were mounted directly into the engine cowling itself. For this particular control box, these two toggle switches need to be in the up position when you're starting the unit. This is the override for the low water switch in the water tank so you can warm up the engine before the tank is full of water. And this is the control for the override on the automatic hydro throttle. So when you're starting out setting pressure, you want to be in manual mode. However, once you are full of water and once the pressure has been set, these two toggles are depressed while you're running your job. This is the self-lubricating clutch on the newest 4200X series. As you can see, there is no need to lubricate the pilot bearing or the main bearing. They're all covered through this self-lubrication chamber right here. It is important to make sure that you have the proper level of fluid. Uh, the only grease points that are left is the top of the clutch and the bottom of the clutch. Please ensure that these are greased. This is the oil level gauge for the power end of the pump. The latest version you check on level ground with the engine not running. The previous versions of the gauges were always checked with the engine running. So please make sure you know which gauge you have or you have the proper labeling so that your operators can check the oil in the proper condition. Ensuring proper belt tension is also a part of the safety component of the Jetstream system. You can have either two belts or a series of nine narrow belts. Either way, your belt tension specifications are on a decal on the inside of the belt inspection door. There are several ways to check your belt tension. The factory uses an electronic tuning system similar to what you would use to tune a guitar. We also have a multiple unit belt tension checker that you would put in and press against the belt and it would record the tension. There's also a single unit that you can use to check the tensions of the belts. This is critical for the nine belt system. Finally, in the field, I tell people just check your tension the way a tractor trailer driver checks his inside tandem wheels. Hit the belts with the back side of an adjustable wrench and make sure you have a good ring and a good bounce back. That is generally sufficient to ensure that your belts are in good condition for the job. The Jetstream 4200 series has its filtration inside the water tank itself. To access the filters, you simply open the top side of the tank, remove the thumb screw that holds down the aluminum plate, and now I have access to the two filters. Ensuring that your filters are in good condition is extremely critical for water blast safety because dirt can present a tremendous danger when we're operating at 10,000, 20,000, or 40,000 PSI. So always ensure that you take the bags out, make sure they're damage free. If you're not sure whether the bag is clean enough, hold it up to the light. If you can see light through the bag, it's good for filtration. If the light is blocked by the dirt in the pores of the bag, change the bags. 
all jet stream pumps have two pressure relief devices on the unit. This particular jet stream pump has two rupture discs set at different pressures to ensure that you have complete safety should something cause an overpressurization in the system. It is essential that you check the rupture disc under the holder prior to starting any job to ensure that no one has placed something other than a valid rupture disc inside the assembly itself. To check the rupture disc, take an adjustable wrench and loosen the cap, remove the cap, and you will find the rupture disc itself. All jet stream rupture discs are engraved with the pressure that they are rated for. This should match the decal on the top of the rupture disc holder cap. Once you have ensured that you have the proper rupture disc and a valid rupture disc, place it back in the assembly, place the cap on top, check the top of the cap to make sure there have been no previous rupture discs blown into it, and then tighten the cap back up again. Snug it with your adjustable wrench and ensure you do it for the second rupture disc as well. An often overlooked but essential part of jet stream water blast safety is ensuring the proper condition of the diffuser inside the back of the bypass valve. It is the job of the diffuser to take the pressure out of the water that you are not using for the job. By turning in the bypass valve, I can bypass just enough water to build the pressure I need for the project I'm working on. The rest of the water the pump generates goes through the diffuser and down to the ground. But it is still at the same pressure you are running at on the job. Without the diffuser, that water will hit your elbow or could blow out through the elbow and into the water tank or personnel that are standing nearby. So checking the condition of the diffuser is essential. I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, you want to disconnect the bypass water line. Then taking an adjustable wrench, you want to remove the back of the bypass valve. Once this is spun out, you can see the diffuser. As long as the diffuser is in good condition, no erosion, no holes other than the ones in the peripheral area, your diffuser is in good condition. You're good to blast. However, if this has been severely eroded or if there is a hole blasted in the center, it is essential that you slide this out and okay. replace it with a new one. At the same time, you can check your bypass valve cartridge, which is located inside the body. You want to make sure there is no erosion on the surface of the plunger or no erosion on the surface of the body itself. If it is in good condition, you want to insert that back in and then reassemble your bypass valve. and reconnect your bypass line. And that's all there is to checking to make sure you're in good safety condition. All jet stream units come with a grounding system bolted to the frame itself. Because even when you're water blasting, you can separate charge. Lightning comes in the middle of a thunderstorm, so just because you're blasting with water does not mean you can't separate a substantial electrical charge. Especially if you're working in flammable atmospheres, this needs to be bolted to an authorized ground to ensure that any charge that is separated flows back through the system and down to a legitimate ground. One thing I'd like to teach you is what I call the coffee cup filter test. And what this does is it takes a drain off of the low pressure head of the pump. This is the water that is about to be sucked into the cylinders and pressurized to 10, 20, 40,000 PSI. Because our filters are 50 micron, 20 micron, 1 micron, you cannot see dirt particles at that level. 
So anything you would see in a coffee cup means that there is dirt in the system and it needs to be flushed out. To do that, it's relatively simple. You just come over to where the lubricator lines are and take a sample and look at the condition of the water in your cup. There should be nothing floating, nothing suspended in the water column, or nothing settling out in the bottom of the cup. If you have a clear sample, go ahead and run your pump, you're good to go. If you have dirt floating, suspended, or settling, open this and flush, take a resample, and only when you have a good sample should you begin water blasting. All right, what you're seeing right now is, is inside of the head of a jet stream water blaster. And obviously this one has not had proper filtration. The only way dirt can get into the system is by bypassing the filter. And you see that there is dirt where the valve seat, and there's also dirt through the open holes, which is the low pressure reservoir that we took the coffee cup sample out of on the other pump. So this pump would definitely not pass a coffee cup test and would need to continue to be flushed prior to pressurizing the water. I want to show you how to check the safety of your jet stream style foot pedal. The cartridge that changes the water from going out onto the ground to going down through your lance is behind this dump style tube. To loosen it, you want to take an adjustable wrench and then just spin this off, unthread it. Once this is loose, just jerk on the dump tube and the cartridge will come right out. All right, the cartridge is held in place by a little ball bearing. And if you just depress that ball bearing with your fingernail and slide it out, you've now separated the cartridge from the dump body. Set that aside. Now I want to inspect this for wear on the bottom of the cartridge, wear on the bottom of the pin, any dirt or foreign material that might be in there, and also that when I fully depress this cartridge, that when I pull it back, it fully opens the holes so the water can go out the dump and to the ground when you're not blasting. Once this is past your inspection, it's a simple matter of just snapping it back in inserting it back into the foot pedal, give it a gentle tap, and then just thread it back on again, and snug it up with your adjustable wrench. You are now safe to use the foot pedal. Next I want to talk to you about a Jetstream single trigger shotgun. It has a 48 inch barrel, 66 inch overall length. One of the most important things and often overlooked things on a water blast shotgun is to check underneath the safety shroud. The safety shroud is literally PPE. It is a temporary barrier between you and a possible hose rupture causing you harm. So neglecting to check underneath that is both unsafe and unwise. It's relatively simple to do. This is just supposed to be a hand-tight thread on the cap. It carries no pressure. It just holds the shroud in place. So unthread this. And pull the safety shroud down to check the condition of the metal and the whip hose underneath the safety shroud. These should be stored with the shroud pulled down so that they can dry and not rust. Each person that takes a shotgun should examine this prior to doing water blasting. So having this nut well lubricated so it's easy to pull down makes the job go a heck of a lot quicker. Once you're satisfied with the condition of the hose and the fittings underneath, just simply slide the safety shroud back up again and then hand tighten the nut, remembering that if you torque it on, you're not going to be able to pull it down easily on the job site the next time a man has to use it. Now you are ensured that the condition of the whip hose and the fittings under the safety shroud are safe enough to use on your blast job. Once you're sure of the condition of your safety hose underneath the safety shroud, 
you want to inspect the cartridge just like we did in the foot pedal. To access this one, it is the hex nut on top of the body of the gun. Just take your adjustable wrench, loosen that, and then once again, we just want to screw it off to the fullest extent of the threads. And once we get there, just wiggle it out. You have the same setup you had in the foot pedal, except instead of being attached to a dump tube, it's attached to this hex nut. Has the same ball bearing, push down, pull out to release. I'm doing the same inspection I did, checking the pin condition. This one has some dirt on it. Checking the body condition and checking the condition of the cap itself. Any erosion of metal on the cap means someone was feathering the trigger on the gun. We will discuss that later. But if there is erosion of the metal on any part, they need to be replaced. Now I'm going to clean this cartridge and we'll put it back together again. All right, we're going to clean this cartridge before reinstalling it. In order to do that, I'm going to remove the spring from the plunger. As you can see, there's quite a bit of material there that needs to be removed. So I'm just going to take a rag and make sure that is polished up well. Then I'm going to thread my rag through the body of the cartridge and clean out any debris from that side. Got a bit there. And then repeat the process from the other end. And then finally, we want to make sure there's no debris on the spring. The easiest way to do that is to just find the beginning of the spring put a rag between it and then just roll that rag as you twist the spring. This will clean off the upper and lower surfaces of the spring and make sure there's no foreign material there that could possibly hinder the travel. Finally just pull the cloth through the spring, reassemble, test your cartridge, and then go ahead and place it back in your gun. To do that, just like we did with a foot pedal, we're going to snap it in and then we're going to insert it, give it a gentle tap, thread it on to the full extent of the threads, and then use your adjustable wrench to snug it the rest of the way until it is flush. And now you have a checked safety shroud that you know is safe and a checked cartridge that you know is safe. You're ready to begin water blasting. Let's talk about hoses and lances. In the jet stream world, a hose is comprised of a water carrying tube surrounded by massive wraps of wire and a thick protective outer coating. This is because hoses are designed to run outside from the unit to the activating device, be it a shotgun or a foot pedal. In the jet stream world, we also have lances. Lances are a water-filled tube surrounded by wire or thermoplastic with an outer covering, but the outer covering and the wire wraps are nowhere near as robust as they are inside a hose. This is because they are designed to go inside pipes or tubes. Hoses generally weigh twice as much as a comparably sized lance. So if you are interested in doing twice as much cleaning inside a pipe with a thrust for a given tip, it is always better to use a lance than to use a hose. Hoses are for outside, lances are for inside. Regardless of which you choose, they all need to be inspected for defects prior to use on a water blast job. All right, to inspect a lance, what I want to do is I want to check the end fittings first to make sure that there are no threads that have been damaged so I can get a good seal when I couple them together. I want to make sure any extraneous material has been moved that could be hiding a defect. And then I want to very carefully go over the entire lance. I want to look for exposed wires I want to look for kinks where the hose is not making a curve, it's making an angular bend. 
I want to look for bubble spots in the outer covering that indicate a leak inside the hose and generally anything else that would give me pause before I would use that hose in service. Rough spots. And this is a piece of extraneous material, so once again we want to try to remove that if possible to make sure there's nothing bad underneath. And it's easy to just kind of wipe this through a rag, wipe it through your hands, because any defect is going to grab the rag and let you know there's a place of that you need to be concerned about. Now you can see there is a cut on this one, a pretty deep cut that has exposed the wires. Those wires look to me like they have been compromised, so this particular lance would fail. I would not use this in high pressure water blasting because of that defect and the compromised wires right there. This is why it is essential to check all of your hoses and lances before each job. And anytime you see somebody taping or covering up a portion of a hose, to me that's a red flag. I want to look deeper. There's nothing here, but obviously the one we found earlier is enough to take this lance out of service. All right, now we're going to take a look at a water blast hose. Once again, Hoses stay outside. To inspect a hose, once again, the first thing I want to do is take a look at the couplings to make sure the threads are in good condition. I want to take a look at the metal that connects the hose to the coupling to make sure that it's in good condition. And then I'm going to repeat the process that we used on the lance, running it through my hands in a rag, making sure that every single portion of the hose has been inspected. Once again, I'm looking for kinks, exposed wires. Now we have exposed wires right here. It does not look to me like any of these wires have been compromised. However, this needs to have its protective covering restored prior to its next use in high pressure water surface. So, until this is restored, this hose cannot be used. Let's continue. Now once again we have an area of exposed wires and as you can see down there on the ground we haven't gotten to it yet. There are many many areas of exposed wires on this hose. With this many areas of exposed wire it would be very difficult to restore the protective covering and probably not very cost effective. So in the case of this hose, with so many areas exposed, I would probably fail this hose. We've already showed you all of the safety checks necessary to operate a water blast unit safely. But some people believe that they need to make a choice between safety and productivity. What we're going to do now is Alan and I are going to set up a job to lance tubes in a heat exchanger. We're going to do all of the safety checks that we showed you earlier because I want to show you that you can do it in a timely manner. There does not need to be a choice between safety and productivity on your water blast job.
Ready to do a line flush? Yes, sir. All righty. Good to go. We have now just completed a complete safety check on a water blast system for lancing tubes. Now that we've set up the job, we're going to be doing some tube lancing. Alan is going to be lancing scaled tubes. We've already checked to make sure all the tubes are open. However, he will be using a handheld anti-withdrawal device because sometimes on a job, it's impossible to tell whether the tube is open or plugged. The handheld anti-withdrawal device prevents a nozzle from hydraulicking back on the operator if the tube is plugged and builds pressure. We're going to use it to show you that it is not a hindrance using a handheld anti-withdrawal device to productivity. Safety and productivity, once again, can go hand in hand. Now we're going to show you how to do water blast shotgunning. Alan is going to inspect the shotgun, then we will do a pre-operational flush of the barrel, and finally he will install the tip and we will do some water blast shotgunning.
Jetstream has adopted the WJTA IMCA color coding for high pressure water equipment. The color coding system indicates at a glance what pressure the component you're using is rated for. It ranges from yellow for 10,000 PSI to green for 15,000 PSI to blue for 20,000 PSI and to orange for 40,000 PSI. We color code our gauges, our actuators, our hoses, and our fittings so you can tell at a glance that you have the proper fitting, hose, lance, everything you need to operate at the pressure you've chosen. Welcome to my personal Hall of Shame. These are water blast parts that I've collected over my career that each tell an interesting story about one of the things we've previously talked about in this safety video. So join me as we go through each one of these and the story it tells. The first one is what's left of a coupling. Couplings break. If you did not have a whip check when this coupling broke, your people would be in serious danger. So don't think that there's any piece of equipment out there that doesn't need to be inspected or any safety system we've discussed that doesn't need to be present on your job site. The second one is the cap off the shotgun that we took a look at earlier that holds the cartridge. You can see in this one there is an extreme amount of erosion of the metal. In fact, the ball bearing has fallen out completely. And this is caused by feathering the trigger of a shotgun. Now, we, I told you we would discuss what feathering the trigger was at a later time. This is the trigger portion of a jet stream shotgun. This is the safety. And the trigger should always be fully depressed when you're blasting. Sometimes people do not change the tip based on their body weight and to compensate for the back thrust they'll back off on the trigger a little bit so water's coming out of the dump at the same time water's coming out of the barrel when they blast. This causes cavitation inside the body of the gun and causes extreme erosion on the cap and the cartridge within. I told you earlier, if you see metal erosion, it's a sure sign somebody's been feathering the trigger and not fully depressing it. This is erosion damage inside a bypass valve cartridge. This is normal. This is wear and tear. This is why we inspect them every time before the job. These are the diffusers that we talked about checking in the bypass valve cartridge. As you can see, these two have extreme erosion. They need to be switched out. Compare that to the body of a brand new one. There's quite a difference. There's quite a bit of material that has been removed as you see the two different sizes. This is a bypass valve diffuser that looks in perfectly great condition until you look inside it. If you look inside it, you can see a hole has been blown straight through the diffuser body cartridge. This was not checked on a particular application. The consequence of, there was a hole drilled through this Schedule 80 stainless steel elbow and you can see the exit hole on the outside. The only reason they knew there was a problem is, is that it cut a hole in the plastic water reservoir tank and water started leaking out of the tank. It's a much better practice to check your diffuser and you won't have to replace your elbow, and you won't have to replace your water tank. I have two cartridges in my hand. Uh, both of them came out of a standard jet stream unit. This cartridge here 
when I fully depress it and release, it comes back and shows you that it has a complete opening for the water to flow through down the dump and out onto the ground. This cartridge here, when I fully depress it and release, has very little opening for the water to come out and go down to the ground. This cartridge is dangerous because if the water can't dump, it will retain its pressure. The operator won't have the ability to lose the pressure to the lance or to the shotgun. That's why it's essential to ensure the action of your cartridge as you go through and check them. All of the fittings on a jet stream water blast unit should be non-corrosive, stainless steel on the pressure side. As you can see, I've collected these off of a unit that did not have the original stainless steel on it. These are black iron. Not only are they ugly on the outside, they're very ugly on the inside. There's corrosion both on the outside and the inside. This means that metal particles are going to be shooting down the high pressure water stream into the tip that the gunner or the lancer has potentially plugging up a hole and causing overpressurization. This is a three quarter by half inch reducer. This is a straight half inch. Both have the same problems. They're black iron. Black iron should never, ever be used on the high pressure side of a water blaster. Ensuring you have a quality tip is also essential. This is a homemade tip. As you can see, it exploded on a water blast job. All tips that come from reputable manufacturers like Jetstream are tested to twice their pressure and rated that they will not fail for three times the working pressure of the tip. Obviously, this one didn't even stand up to the working pressure. If this doesn't shock the heck out of you, you probably don't need to be water blasting. These are not even Schedule 80 couplers. And this is a crow's foot that's not rated for any pressure. Somebody decided that they could make a good pipe cleaning tool out of whatever they had at hand. This should be very, very scary. Never, ever try to make your own water blast system. Go to reputable manufacturer where you have assurance that everything has been tested and certified up to the pressures you will be using. This tip was over torqued to the point where it actually split the tip. This is a problem because most people don't understand what the torque specifications for high pressure water blasting are. This is a 10,000 pound tip, but regardless of the pressure range, for quarter inch, such as this tip, or smaller, the torque spec is 50 pounds of torque. For larger systems, it's 150 pounds of torque. Anything more than that actually destroys the quality of the seal and can cause the component to fail. So stay within your torque spec. Don't strain yourself when you don't need to. All right, making sure your filtration system is working properly and that the water is going to the lubricator to your plungers is also essential. As you can see, there is damage to this set of packing. If I take it apart, you can see that this has been burnt. It was burnt because of friction due to no lubrication. So please ensure your filtration and your lubrication is working before you go do your water blast job. All right, this is the back ring from a Jetstream univalve. As you can see, there is very deep scarring on this ring. And that's caused by dirt. You know, the problem is we can see dirt marks on tips. We can see them on the components of univalves. We can see them on fittings. What we can't do is see them on the inside of hoses and lances. So if you're seeing this kind of damage in stainless steel, you have to wonder what's happening to that rubber tube that lines your hose or lance. Most hoses and lances fail from the inside out, not the other way around. So if you're seeing extreme damage to your metal parts, 
please ensure that you get proper filtration instantaneously and check your hoses and lances once again before resuming water blasting. All right, this is the end of a quarter inch lance. This quarter inch lance split at the fitting and the lance failed, blew off. Now originally this was blamed on poor manufacturer quality, but if you take a closer look, there are extremely deep pipe wrench marks over the entire surface of this quarter inch lance. This is a 50 foot pound fitting. You should never use a pipe wrench on a quarter inch lance. Channel locks are more than sufficient to give you 50 foot pounds of torque. And also, if you see extremely deep wrench marks in a fitting, it would be enough for me to fail that fitting because you've actually moved or removed a lot of the metal that the manufacturer put into it to give it its strength in the first place. Thank you for your kind attention in this Jetstream safety video. If you need any additional information or training, please contact your local FS Solutions office or your sales representative. Additional information is contained on the USB drive that accompanies this video. We have copies of catalogs, safety information, as well as forms that can help you keep your job site both safe and efficient. Once again, thank you for your attention.